Miracles False Prophets Don't allow yourselves to be deceived, because the adversary constantly seeks to keep you in darkness and to obscure light from above. He tries to trap you with lies and falsehoods and thereby render you unreceptive to the absolute truth. He is always plotting to obscure your vision, to confuse your senses and to shroud the essence of the eternal deity and uses means which are difficult to discern as Satan's work of deception if the sincere will for pure truth does not exist. He feigns piety towards people, his appearance is that of an angel of light because the people themselves desire radiance and splendor and can only imagine divine glory as external magnificence. He feigns the illusion of God's glory when he finds gullible people who derive pleasure from it and through them he spreads lies and misleading notions and thus obscures the thoughts of human beings, they accept the falsehood and reject the pure truth which God himself sends in plain form to earth. And thus the lies and fallacies spread much faster than the truth, because this is what people themselves want and because those who spread falsehoods work in the guise of being a representative of Christ's teachings and hence find approval everywhere. Satan works with cunning and force. He uses human beings who do not sincerely desire the truth, and they are his slaves because they do not sincerely desire God either, who is the eternal truth himself. And thus Satan, the lord of falsehood, has an easy time. Human establishments can only be of lasting value when God's support is called upon and God wants to be called upon in spirit and in truth, otherwise he will not listen. This excludes every outer formality, all kinds of ceremony, splendor and grandeur prevent the right kind of prayer, prayer in spirit and in truth. He who takes notice of external events will find making an inner connection with God very difficult, because the adversary will always step between him and God divert his attention and capture his senses with external impressions. And therefore do not look for God in grandeur and splendor, do not look for him in surroundings where earthly matter has its greatest effect. This is the field of God's adversary and he works it with success. God reveals himself in secret, he reveals himself in people who are lowly and humble. He reveals himself in those who shall speak on his behalf because his revelations apply to all of humanity and the individual person merely serves as his tool through which he speaks to the people himself. His revelations primarily aim to spread the truth and to proclaim his will, adherence to which results in eternal bliss for the human being. Through seers and prophets he will also announce the end of the world and draw attention to the signs of the last days. It is his will that humanity be given the relevant information, that no one shall claim that they have not been reminded and warned when the end takes them by surprise. These seers and prophets will always be human beings with profound faith and love otherwise God's adversary will choose people to work for him and find their approval. Consequently particular attention has to be paid to the conduct of those who call themselves God's servants, whether it complies with God's will, with his commandments. But then the revelations should also be believed. God works in silence, albeit in a clear and remarkable way, yet not in miracles which would force people to believe just as he excludes all outward show because he is not trying to win over the people of the world with splendor and grandeur, but he wants to turn their hearts away from that worldly light of deceit. Worldly people have to be able to explain a natural event by natural means, otherwise they would be forced into believing, which God would never sanction and thus only profoundly devout human beings will have extraordinary revelations when God's love wants to award those and he wants to reveal himself to them. However, 
public miracles compel people to believe and they would not progress spiritually because fear of God can never take the place of love which the human being has to feel for him in order to join him. But miracles only cause fear in the immature person and never love. Nevertheless Satan does use such means, in this manner he wants to prevent human beings from loving God and his work shall be unhindered where there is a lot of sinfulness and where human beings are seldom introspective but worldly minded instead. But even there he appears under the cover of piety. He pulls the wool over people's eyes, stopping them from seeing clearly and thus exercises his influence. This is further aided by false representatives of Christ who deem themselves destined to spread his teachings but who are not sufficiently living in truth themselves to separate lie and falsehood as such and to exclude them. Because he works with cunning and power. God, however, is love, and only love flows from his revelations and cultivates love. And thus you should apply this standard. Truth is where love is taught and practiced because there is God himself. But where the light of the world shines too brightly God's adversary makes himself known. And his activity is falsehood and opposes God even if he tries to appear in a disguise of light. Anyone whose will is turned towards God knows him in spite of his disguise and he is destined to warn his fellow human beings of the false prophets who will always appear when people are in need but who will even worsen spiritual hardship instead of reducing it. And God calls out to people, beware of false prophets because the last days will be used to work against God, against the eternal truth. Amen.